and by all means, they are accountable to the citizens. And uh, Denise, what would you like to say? I'm representing the Mothers on a Mission to Stop Violence, and I'm going to read from the following 10 cases. The state's attorney's practice of plea deals in child sex abuse cases enables guilty offenders to receive reduced charges of their original crimes and serve minimal sentencing or register on the sex offender registry and avoid prison time. In the case of James A. Mortensen, charges of aggravated criminal sexual assault were filed against him on February 11, 2002. Mortensen was convicted of aggravated criminal sexual abuse with bodily harm of a 13-year-old victim on July 28, 2004. The following day, on July 29, 2004, Mortensen appeared on the sex offender registry. He served no prison time. In the case of Leander J. York, Charges of aggravated criminal sexual abuse were filed against him on June 25, 2001. York was convicted of aggravated criminal sexual assault with bodily harm to a five-year-old victim on January 24, 2002. The following day, on January 25, 2002, York appeared on the sex offender registry. He served no prison time. In the case of Pilo M. Zilea, a charge of aggravated criminal sexual abuse was filed against him on June 9, 2004. Zilea was convicted of aggravated criminal sexual abuse to a five-year-old victim on June 6, 29, 2005. On July 7, 2005, Zilea appeared on the sex offender registry. Zilea served no prison time. In the case of Villamore and Cristobal, he was convicted of predatory criminal sexual assault of a six-year-old victim on November 19, 2004. He appeared on the sex offender registry on January 10, 2005. Cristobal served less than two months in prison. In the case of John Borowicz, he was convicted of indecent solicitation and criminal sexual assault of a six-year-old victim on January 29, 2002. Two days later, he appeared on the sex offender registry on January 31st, 2002. He served no prison time. In the case of Gerald S. Ayers, he was convicted of criminal sexual assault of a nine-year-old victim on May 12, 2004. The following day, on May 13, 2004, Ayers appeared on the sex offender registry. Ayers served no prison time. In the case of Clarence L. Williams, he was convicted of predatory criminal sexual assault of a three-year-old victim on, on June 14, 2002. He appeared on the sex offender registry on December 6, 2002. Williams served less than six months in prison. The state's attorney's practice of plea deals in child sex abuse cases victimize and criminalize both innocent victims and defendants, which enables real offenders to walk away with slaps on the wrist. Waller obtains convictions for child sex abuse crimes by violating state statutes and constitutional laws. In the case of Michael A. Desario, who was convicted of predatory criminal sexual assault and faced up to 30 years in prison, was sentenced on February 18, 2003 to, two, to seven and a half years. Throughout the criminal justice process, the victim, my 12-year-old daughter and I, were not informed of our constitutional rights under the Crime Victim Rights Act. Therefore, our right to request to make a victim impact statement was violated. According to the court transcript, the prosecuting attorney, Laura Horner, omitted facts of the case and violated the Rape Shield Law to portray my daughter's behavior on the night of the incident as inappropriate in order to obtain a conviction at the expense of serving justice. Horner informed me that she had previously lost a case to the defendant's attorney and said she needed to win. Horner entered into a plea agreement with the defense for the minimum of six years. I asked the bailiff to inform the judge that I disagreed with the minimum sentence. The judge allowed me the opportunity to speak until Horner interrupted me and cut me off. Based on hearing the facts of the case that I disclosed, the judge refused to accept Horner's plea for the minimum. 
In the case of Christopher Clavino, was originally charged with predatory criminal sexual assault for penetrating a seven-year-old victim over a period of five years. Clavino was convicted of six counts of aggravated criminal sexual abuse in 2006 and sentenced to 18 months of work release with six months off for good behavior. Clavino served a total periodic imprisonment of one year at the county jail. Throughout the criminal justice process, the prosecuting attorney violated the victim's constitutional right to information about the conviction and the sentence. The victim and her parents were unaware that this conviction included probation and Clavino would serve less than the three-year minimum mandated for the crime. In the case of Juan Rivera, who is currently facing his third trial for the murder of 11-year-old rape and murder victim Holly Staker, prosecuting attorney Mike Murmel argued against the defense for the right to dirty her up. Murmel's statement reads as follows. When would the situation ever be except for some very bizarre and phenomenal situation where the state would want to put in prior reputation and prior sexual acts of the victim, not with the defendant, in their own case to dirty her up? When would that ever occur that it would go to the appellate court? So yes, most of these cases have the word defendant in them, but the law is the law. It should be what sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. If it goes to a legitimate issue to explain, give an alternate explanation to a piece of evidence, in this case, the defense is counsel's alternative profile, and the victim is not alive, and it's not one of the enumerated cases, the defense argument has to fail, end of quote. The defense's argument reads as follows. Judge, I don't anticipate this is going to be as detailed of an argument, but it's no less important. We filed a motion in Limelight to exclude all evidence of Holly Staker's sexual activity to be introduced or argued at this trial, end of quote. The state's attorney's practice of violating the rape shield law and victims' constitutional bill of rights to obtain co convictions at the expense of serving justice are criminal acts and should not be tolerated. The state's attorney's practice to accept fully negotiated plea deals for reduced charges and minimal prison sentences in child sex abuse cases should not be tolerated.